What up fam? Welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. Today's episode is part two of my Learn How to Forge series, where I learn how to forge a throwing knife. Now if you missed part one of this series, there should be a link here, or here, or somewhere down in the description. In that episode, we learn how to make the small forge that we use to heat up the metal to make this little guy. So now that we've harnessed fire's mighty powers, let's move around some metal and level up this skill. Step one, gathering materials. I started by setting up my little workstation here with all the tools I thought I'd need. A really quick note here on the power of asking. So the tree stump that I'm using here and also the little piece of metal I'm using as a makeshift anvil were all acquired for free just by asking people for them. So I stopped by a lumber yard to ask them if they had a tree stump and they're like, yeah, sure, bro, just take it. And then I stopped by a metal fab shop to ask for a piece of metal and they're like, yeah, sure, bro, just take it. People just giving stuff away, man. Long story short, not having the funds isn't a detriment to learning a new skill. All you gotta do is ask, what's the worst that can happen? Someone says no. Now for my metal, I used a piece of rebar that I bought from Home Depot. Quick note on rebar, it really isn't great for making knives out of. Um, it actually is a very brittle metal. That being said, it was a very cheap metal, and it was a nice cost-effective way for me to try out my first forge. Step two, prepping the stock. As with any project, safety first. Once I got my forge nice and hot, I added in the metal and left it there till it started to glow. Once hot enough, it was time to bring it over to the anvil and start shaping it. Now I know what you're saying, but clever, how do I know when the metal's hot enough? So a really interesting thing about ferrous metals is when it gets hot enough, it actually loses magnetism. So as you can see here, I have a little magnet that is on my anvil, and I would just touch the metal to see if it would actually stick. If it sticks, it's not hot enough. If it doesn't, you're hot enough. Alternatively, as the metal cools down, it's a good way to test when it's time to go back into the forge. My beginning strategy here is to square off my round stock so I can start to draw it out into a knife shape. To do this, I'm actually hitting with the corner of the head of the hammer. What that does is it pinches the metal a little bit and it actually moves it a lot further. I then go back over it, hitting more squarely with the hammer to even out any of those lumps that I just created. Step three, roughing out the shape. As you can see, as the metal thins out, it becomes a lot easier to move. So my blows become a lot lighter. Also notice that I try to move the most metal while it's still glowing hot. Then as it cools down, I just use the remaining heat to even it out and straighten everything up. You don't wanna be hammering cold metal. Once it gets too cold, bring it back to the forge. Once I got it to roughly the thickness I was going for, I began to taper down the point. Now knowing this was going to be a throwing knife, I opted to keep it a little bit thicker here, just so it could take the force of the throws a little bit better. Okay, so I was actually having a lot of trouble because I did a really poor job securing down my little makeshift anvil here. I think it could have worked okay if I took a little bit more time and maybe like sat it into concrete or something. Luckily, I actually had bought this piece of railroad track from an antique fair last year. I didn't use that first because the top was still rounded and I didn't think it would do a good job. I was wrong. That thing is awesome. And all the like blacksmithing forums, they talk about using pieces of railroad track, but usually they say you gotta grind off the top to make it flat. But they also say that the amount of mass under the anvil is really what makes the difference. And it's absolutely true. The amount of feedback I got while I was hammering this thing was fantastic. I felt like I was way more in control of it. So yeah, get yourself like a, if not a proper anvil, then at least something pretty heavy. And if you have a small piece, just make sure you secure it down to something that is heavy. The closer I got to my final shape, the lighter I hit the metal. At this stage, it was more just straightening everything out and getting out all the little peaks and valleys that I had created. So after some careful attention to detail, I was able to get a uniformly thick, evenly pointed piece of material. Now that's all well and good, but we weren't going for a rebar spear. We want a knife. So with all that roughed out, it's time to cut the handle. Step four, shaping the handle. Now I had this Naruto inspired kind of kunai shape in mind. So I made sure I left plenty of excess material to make that loop at the end. To do this, I heated up the end of the handle. Then once it was up to temperature, I put it over the side of the anvil and began to round it off. I then continued to pound that little loop closed until it formed a complete circle. Now I might not have been paying attention and I actually had the loop going in the wrong direction, but this was a simple fix. All I had to do was heat the bottom of the thing put it in a vise and twist it into the right direction. And as far as mistakes go, it kind of made a neat design, so I was all right with it. I also used this little piece of a ratchet as a form so I can get the loop nice and even. Then finally brought it back over to the anvil and hammered it so it was in a straight line with the blade. Step five, refining the piece. Then it was off to the sander to really refine the shape and polish everything up. I was really impressed with how nicely this polished. You take it out of the forge and you hammer it and everything's kind of black and crusty looking, uh, but just a few seconds on that grinder, man, and it starts to look great. 
Also, rebar has all these little ridges on it. By putting it on the sander, those actually end up getting polished while the rest of it stayed black and made a really cool design. Happy with that. Bam! Check that out. I made a knife. Guys, I am super happy with how this thing came out. Now, I'm sure the experienced blacksmiths among you can call out the little things I might have gotten wrong or the way my techniques are faulty or whatever, but I mean, for my first time ever trying, I'm really happy with this. All told, it was actually a pretty easy first project. Um, it's really impressive once metal gets hot, how simple it is to kind of move around. And I strongly encourage for you to try to give this a shot. But hats off to blacksmiths, because it is definitely more of an art form. The right amount of pressure and the right directions to move things where you want it to move is, that's the tricky part. So my hats off to that whole community. You are all artists. Again, I'd like to thank SkillMonkey Elwendell for recommending this project. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. And if you have a skill you'd like to learn, leave it down in the comments and I will add it to the list. Also, if you like what you saw, please hit me with that thumbs up love and don't forget to subscribe so you see when I release new content. All right, well, I better go. Hidden Leaf Village is going to war and they throw these things around like it's confetti. Anyways, in the meantime, keep leveling up, you. Yeah?